Hey guys, what's up? Just Gay Gaming here. Another video for today. Hope you guys are doing very well. Health is the most important thing. The rest is coming afterwards. Today I would like to talk um, about um, Nvidia and AMD. My experience um, all these years, swapping cards, testing different things, trying out different stuff all the time, trying to see what works better for me. And to be honest, I want to cut to the chase and say that in the last um, six months, seven months, I've actually ended up uh, getting an AMD card. Though I've been playing and working with an NVIDIA card for uh, the biggest part of my life, I did have a 480 AMD years ago. And it lasted quite long. Like, it, it did a good job. It wasn't a bad card at all. It was, it was a good one. Then I've swapped a few uh, NVIDIA cards, 2070, 2060, 2070, 20, uh, 3070, 2080 Super, 4060, 4070, 4070, 4080 Super, and now I am running a 7900 um, XDX Sapphire. And so I tried it all. I tested them all. They they all did the job. Good cards, all of them, undoubtedly. But let me tell you my thoughts, right? And why I've ended up using an AMD card, and why I think that I will be using them for quite a while, unless unless Nvidia does something else and they provide something unique that is unexpected and really worth paying money for. So my main concern with NVIDIA cards has been that uh, they've been, because they because NVIDIA has a monopoly, right? They do have a monopoly, that's clear. And they're pretty expensive. And the technology they provide, though it works, and for example, DLSS does a much, uh, <coughs> sorry, DLSS does um, much better the job than the FSR. Even FSR 3.1 is uh, a bit muddy. To be honest, I would pick DLSS technology any time of the day, any day of the year, and I would hope that AMD will come up with a solution that is that looks as native as possible, as much as the DLSS does. Uh, but the problem for me though was the price and what you get for the price. We all know that Nvidia has been trying; they've been applying all these really weird scammy techniques over the years. You know the drill. You've seen all that before on the internet about rebranding cards and se selling stock uh, like um, overpriced stock for ridiculous prices of 30 50 or 20 50 or whatever these cards are like we all know that nvidia has not been that honest with their fan base and the consumer in general it's, it's a bit anti-consumer so my main reason for swapping to an amd was basically two reasons the first one is the price and the second one is the afm af mf2 uh, technology that uh, AMD providing, which is basically an AI-based upscaling technique. That if you, if you, I don't know, guys, if you're running like anything like um, an AMD card on your PC, and you go to the gaming tab under the graphics, you have this AMD Fluid Motion Frames too. And when you enable this, you're gonna get all this FPS boost. So this goes and hooks up on your game when you play and then it uses ai technology to boost the performance by adding lots of frames i'm talking about doubling your frames tripling them sometimes like ridiculous amounts of frames and that's what you can you cannot see that with this technology so like what happened is that um a family a family member like my brother basically was like oh i need a card i don't have mine i said I had the 4080 Super uh, like uh, six months ago, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna give it to you. Just why don't you just take it? You, you don't have a graphics card. I'm gonna get, I wanna try the red team. I'm gonna get an AMD. So I took the AMD, and then AFM, AFMF2 comes out after some time, and I'm testing it on almost every game I have, and I'm blown away. I'm blown away by the amount of performance I was getting. So let's take, for example, Space Marine 2, right? So natively with the uh, 7900 XTX, you're going to get 
approximately 100 to 100, 120 frames tops, 130 frames maybe all maxed out. I was very impressed to see that enabling this AI technology, I was basically getting close to 220 to 130 frames. There's supposed to be some latency, a little bit of something, but it's so subtle, it didn't make a difference. I, I didn't even feel anything. To me. It didn't seem like there was latency. I mean, whenever you use DLSS and frame generation and stuff, like you are supposed to get some latency, but eventually uh, they do have these extra tools here. So if you enable the, front, the motion frames too, then you can enable anti-lag, you can enable like uh, enhanced sync, which reduces visual tearing and lag and a few other tools they have here. Like if you guys, if you have, if you have a card, a 6006 series card, if you have a 6000 series card upwards, uh, give it a try. And by the way, what I'm saying now, because there might be some um, people, that, they might say, what are you talking about? We, don't, we know all that stuff already. Like, why are you wasting our time? Ha <laughs> ha, you think you're smart? I'm not trying to be smart. I'm trying to help people who don't know much about computers and they might need a bit of help with something. Give them a few ideas on how to get more out of their rig. Maybe they have a PC with an AMD GPU and they're new and they might want some help on, you know, achieving better, you know, achieve, achieving more frames, better frames. So this is this is to whom I'm referring to. I'm referring to this user that is not experienced, doesn't know much. They need help. So basically, again, like this, this thing, when you when you open up your game, it hooks up on your game and you can enable or disable it. That's, that's okay. I've tried it on Call of Duty. I've tried it on lots of games, even competitive games. It works. There's supposed to be some lag, but you can compensate for it with some internal tools that AMD has the same way as Nvidia. And then like, I'm thinking like, look man, like the, the card is like in Greece, where I'm from, it's less than a thousand euros. So basically for less than a thousand euros, I'm able to buy a card that when I enable this technology, it plays amazingly. It plays like it doubles the performance of the card, right? Even better than a 1490, basically, in 2K, because I'm playing in 2K. And then I'm thinking, like, what's the point of the NVIDIA card then? I'm sure they're going to come up with a new technology as well themselves. I'm sure, I'm sure they will. But so AMD is going to. And with that in mind, I want to remind you guys that AMD said recently, they've been saying for some time now actually, not recently, they're not going to release high tier graphics cards in 2025. So most probably there's not going to be a 7900 XTX again, equivalent, or let's call it an 8900 XTX. And there's going to be more medium tier cards, um, 7700, sorry, 8700, 8800, something like that. So, but again, if you have this technology in your hands, where you're able to upscale everything with AI, then you're giving so much life to these cards that maybe an overpriced high tier card is not necessary anymore. Even a person who owns a six series card that costs like 200 bucks and they, they are disappointed with it and it doesn't give them the frames they want. Now they can use this technology to get more frame. And by the way, that's not FSR 3, right? I'm not referring to FSR 2, FSR 3. This is a completely different thing. FSR, you can enable it in the game. I'm talking about getting double and triple the frames without even enabling FSR. And imagine if you enable FSR, I mean, you're going to get a bit of a... You're going to get muddy, but you're still going to get even more frames. My t-shirt doesn't like the green screen. So, what I've seen is... What, what I'm seeing, what I've seen is that I'm getting many, many more frames in games. My monitor can go up to 165 hertz, so I can I can easily reach that with in most games natively. But um, my fluid motion frames too can help me give that in even more. And you can do that already. And also that gives more life from breath of fresh air to older cards that they don't have the capacity to provide natively more frames. And now I understand why AMD does not want to create overpriced high tier cards. And I admire that actually, because you know what? They have low market share 
they are like less than 15% of the global market because Nvidia is taking the rest and it's like a monopoly. And you know what? That way they might actually they might actually improve their market share by doing exactly that. By selling the cards cheaper and providing technology to people that they can use to upscale their game, the performance, you know, get them better frames, like give more life to their cards. So someone who has a 6,000 series card right now and is getting, I don't know, like, um, actually, let's do a test, right? Let's check on YouTube. I'm sure there's going to be a few examples that I can show you what I mean. So we got we got another um, example here, like from some channel, Edward Gaming, not sure. Just I found it randomly and I want to show you guys the 6, 600 GPU DRX, what it does with the AFM F2 technology on. Basically, look at Battlefield 2042, 20, 20, right? Approximately, I mean, he's looking at the sky, right? Not a great example. Yeah, approximately 160 frames. Okay, good. Uh, we go to Alan Wake 2, heavy game, pretty heavy. You get around 60 frames, right? You, you get that. And <laughs> the, I, I think it's showing you here the base frame rate. And then it's showing you what you can achieve with the AFMF2. I think I think this is what it is. Yeah, you get approximately 28 frames, and then this is what you get, right? So if you turn it on, Assassin's Creed Mirage natively gives you around 40 frames, and then when when you enable the upscaler, it gives you around 90 frames. Uh, Battle 2042, what was the native? Around 80. It almost double. Days Gone, that's a pretty old game. 45, 48, almost 100. The list goes on. You can there can be so many examples. So basically, almost double the frames, if if not more. And the input latency, whatever. I don't see any input latency myself. Like, but anyway, what I'm, I'm trying to say, guys, look, like you have a cheap, very cheap card, a very old card, and with this technology, you are able to run this like um, on every card, like CD6 upward, and. With NVIDIA, you can't always do that. I want to remind you what happened with the, thir with the three, with the 30 series, right? The 30 series. Um, mo many people, many people got a 3090, RTX 3090, and they thought that's it. That's it for some time. And then the series 40 comes out and you know what? You can't use frame generation. You cannot use the latest frame generation. You cannot use the latest DLSS, you gotta wait. And people assume that, you know, that they cannot use it now. And then after some time, they said, yeah, actually, we can actually release it now for the 30 series card. So they, they put the latest DLSS and frame generation behind the paywall. So the people go and buy series 40 cards. And then they actually came back and said, no, actually, you can use DLSS, but you can't use frame generation. So you spend a fortune on a 30 series card, 3090, and it was basically kind of obsolete. So with, with AMD, you don't get that though. And being an owner of a 4080 Super, I feel, I, I was feeling an ease. I was feeling worried, like what's gonna happen? Now? Like 50 series cards gonna come out and what? Like there's gonna be something new coming out? And I'm not gonna be able to use it because it's not gonna be for me. It's gonna be only for the 50, uh, uh, 50 series users. And I don't wanna pay more money. I've already paid lots of money. And that brings an ease. That, that, that doesn't make me feel comfortable. So these are the main reasons. The main reason is that the price and the anti-consumer tactics, which I think they're pretty gross, right? Now, in terms of the drivers, I haven't noticed. I'm, I'm still waiting for the driver's troll to come and eat me at night when I'm sleeping you know, or or destroy my PC. But guys, like, I, I see no freaking problems with anything. Like, the, the games, all the games run okay, run smoothly, no driver's issues. Like, I understand that NVIDIA has great tools for streamers and content creators, but so so does AMD, I guess. Not, not as good, but I can stream. I can, I can do recordings. I can do... 2K streaming with high bit rates, incredible quality. If I want, like, I can't do all that. But but knowing that AMD is going to give you the latest technology on the next card, like 
Like if they're gonna get the next the, the, the next cards out, and maybe they're gonna have FSR four, but you know that owning a six series card, you're gonna still get FSR four. Even Nvidia users can get FSR four. Even the ten series Nvidia cards are gonna get the FSR. Like they can now. You know, already they they already can. So that's my point. My point is, like, I know Nvidia is a monopoly, but it's not necessary. It's not mandatory to have an NVIDIA card. And it's not mandatory to even have a console. I am all up for a console. Like I'm I'm like a supporter of the console. I, li I like consoles. I think they're useful. They're good tools. But um or maybe maybe paying up to four, five hundred bucks, six hundred bucks tops for the pro console. Okay, I won't pay more. Because as far as AI goes and these upscaling techniques, now you see what AFMF2 does live with Hitman. Natively 60 frames with the technology on 150. It's a game changer. You can have a $600 PC, a $1,000 PC, and it can do wonders. Wonders just because of the AI upscale. If you have all AMD, even the CPU and smart memory, how they call it, is enabled as well. So even the consoles are becoming obsolete, basically. Well, what's the point, right? If you pay a little, that's okay. But if you pay more, maybe it's point. So that's 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 what I want to talk about. I want to talk about my experience with AMD, why I think it's been great, why I recommend people to get an AMD card. And it's mostly about the software, not about the raw power, which is not bad at all, right? But it's a lot about the optimization and the software. Thanks for watching. If you did like this, leave a comment, like, and a subscribe. It would really help. Talk to you very soon. Thank you, guys.